Hi, I'm Blue, and this is Makers Ask, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, brush care mostly, but the care and feeding of your tools. I'm a big believer that uh, if you take care of your tools, they will take care of you too. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So to start with, if I'm having a lot of trouble with the painting and it's just not going the way that I really want it to go, and I look down and my brush looks like this, I am not confused. <laughs> so there's no way I'm going to be able to get nice clean edges with a brush that now looks like this. And it happens. It happens even if you take great care of your brushes, because I do. Um, I don't care what this part looks like, but the important thing to me is that I don't like obstacles. I don't like to create problems. I like to avoid them where possible. So uh, any time I can um, take a little frustration out of my way, I go for that. Because anytime I feel frustrated, it pulls me out of my right brain into my left. Like now I gotta ah, deal with that. So I want to avoid these things wherever possible. So after I um, paint, I always build in some time to spend at least 10 minutes, if not a half an hour, cleaning up. Um, part of that is because I like to keep my space really clean and clear so that I know where everything is all the time. That's another little frustration thing that I, I do to keep myself um, pleasant while painting. <laughs> so all of my paints are organized in a particular way and everything. So when I'm done, well, here's what I do in the meantime. I have this jar on the floor, handy little jar. And this is the jar I keep on the floor with me because I don't want to get them confused. Can you see all my brushes? I put these out so you could see. I have more jars. But what I do is I separate them out this orange jar here is my favorites, and these are my oil painting brushes, and these are all in really good shape, really, really good shape. When they uh, are used up a little bit more, they graduate to one of these jars. And these are great, I use these for all kinds of things, but I don't use them if I'm starting a, a painting and I'm doing detail. I do not want to grab this brush to do details with it. Can you see this brush? Even wet? I'm never going to get a nice clean edge, but if I've got some project I'm working on or um, they're great for using for gold leaf or for anything else, but I designate them like that and then I mark them because the worst thing I can do is use this in glue and then go try to use it on an oil painting later. Oh, so that's that. So when I, um, oh, the jar, important. So I'm painting along, I'm done with this color, I'm done with this brush, I put it in this jar. This means I'm using this, this brush currently, I can pull it back out and use it again if I know that I was using a dark color on this small brush, whatever. Not this one, because I don't use this one anymore, but for instance. And by the end of a day of painting, this jar tends to look a little bit like this. Now I know I got, I got at least 10 minutes of work here before I leave. So if I've got to go pick up a child from school or do something, I know I've got to leave enough time to do that. So how is that done? People don't know this, and this is a surprise to me because your brushes look like this, and then you don't know why you aren't, you know, as successful as you want to be in painting and you're really frustrated. It might just be the brush, you know? Ugh. So, um, here's how you clean your brushes. First thing you have to do, and you have to promise me you will always, always, always at least do this step. Um, these are great, these little coil jars. This is a Scylla coil, it's called. Very dirty, very nasty in there. It's what its job is, it's fine. But it has a tiny little spring. Can I do this without dripping it? I don't know. Okay, coil in the bottom. So I take the dirty brush and I bounce it on that coil to rid it of most of the substance, most of the paint and grime. Um, and then from there, sorry, I take it to my sink and I turn on my hot water and you can actually use dishwashing liquid soap like Dawn or something that gets oils out or I use this stuff, which is master's soap, and I, um, very important brush thing. These are made mostly, my brushes aren't really uh, sables, they're so expensive, and they don't, um, these synthetic ones hold up pretty well, so these are synthetic sables, mostly, and you can see that this one doesn't, not in good shape, but here's the thing. Maybe some of you have not done this, but most of you have played with a doll with that plastic hair, you ever bent one of those hairs? You have to just cut it off. So these are the same way. So if you take one of these brushes and you paint with it in some scrubby way or whatever, it'll look like this right away. You can spend 50 bucks on this brush and it's gonna look like this when you're done. 
or you can spend five dollars on this brush and do that to it still gonna look like this so um when you're painting do not scrub this way and don't mix your paints with a paintbrush round around 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 in circles i i have uh, nicknamed these scarecrow brushes don't want my brushes to look like scarecrows only because i can't use them that's really frustrating so even when i go to clean my brushes when i'm bouncing it on the on the coils i'm not mashing it and i'm not scrubbing it because i like these these are my friends <laughs> very nice so on my soap, I'm gonna paint it this way and turn it over and paint it this way. Always going in the direction in which it's clamped. This is the ferrule. I wanna keep it in this direction so that I never ever bend these hairs backwards because then they're gonna make extra lines in my painting and I'm gonna be like, da! Ah! So don't do that. Okay, once you're done with that, you can uh, use a brush conditioner and put conditioner in, but if you're using a synthetic brush, it's not going to condition that brush. It's only can condition it if it's actually some kind of hair, boar's hair or some kind of a hair. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. The other thing to consider is when they're wet and you squeeze it out, you're not gonna, you don't wanna pull the hairs out of the ferrule of the clamp, but you do wanna, I wanna squish it here and rid it of all the water I can. And then here's another mistake people make. They dry them like this. What happens is the water collects down in the ferrule here and it rots this wooden part. This may look like plastic, but they're not. They're usually a, a coated wood. So you don't wanna do that. So dry them flat like this. Dry them flat, okay? When they're done, they go in jars. Okay, that's for oils. For acrylics, it's a little bit different, but much the same. Um, rawr, these are my acrylic brushes, most of them. <clears throat> Sorry, just kicked you. Um, so here's one. Oh my God, what happened there? So this one started to get messy and yucky, but there's a technique for dry brushing called scumbling. And it's literally, you dip it in a tiny bit of paint and then you scumble around like this. Ah, it's fine because I did not designate this as a scumbling brush until it looked much like this one. And once it does, it's pretty much wrecked anyway. So it's fine to use it as a scumbling brush or whatever. And then I have a few more that I actually write on the ferrules. This one says Mod Podge. If I'm doing some collage work or whatever, I write Mod Podge on it. That way I don't, you know, cross pollinate these things. Another really, really important thing about cross pollination while I'm talking about that, you do not, even though the handles all say for acrylics or oils, or it might even say and, they don't mean and. They don't, they don't. When you buy it, take it home, decide. I have a system. This is silly, but it's my system. Very easy. You notice there's something these all have in common. Your artist, you'll figure it out. They're red. <laughs> so I just buy these. They're about the same and in inexpensive brushes. The red ones are my acrylic brushes and I keep them in my little handy basket. And my oil brushes all have some sort of darker handle helps me remember. I do not want the molecules of water in my oil brushes. So, and it takes one time, I'm gonna use this brush. And so this one, you can see it has a red handle against the rules, but over here I've written oil. So I know that this is safe to use that. But if I screw it up and use it on something else, then um, it, it becomes less archival, which is important to me. I'm, I'm selling this stuff. So I wanna be able to stand behind my work and say, you know, it's not gonna fall apart in a year and a half or whatever. So um, that's about cross-pollination. So something else I see all the time, and in my classes people know, Blue's gonna make this sound, ah! every time I see this, all the time. Jar of water. Everybody knows acrylics dry fast, so you don't wanna leave your brushes um, with paint in it, they'll get stuck with paint. So I'm done. Do not do this. What this does is, have you ever seen a brush that looked like a fish hook? <laughs> it's from that. So you leave this in here and it bends to the side and then you cannot recover that. Unless it's a sable. If it is and you've got a hundred dollar brush in your repertoire, yay for you. I don't have any like that. That's not true. I have one that my mother had. Check this out. Where is it? This is her watercolor brush. As good as it was what, 30 years ago, if I get it wet, perfect point. Perfect point. So there you go. It's great, they're worth the money. Now I have to let this one dry flat because I don't want to rot the ferrule up. My mother would not be happy. So 
Um, but here's, here's a good example. This brush has been used a lot. You see that even wet? That brush is going to make such a mess. So if I'm really doing precision work, I hate this brush for that. If I'm painting clouds, <laughs> great, use that brush, but not if I want something accurate. Oop, and I'm still going to dry it flat. Okay, so don't leave your brushes in the water. If you do need to leave it in water, let's say for a second that um, somebody other than you uh, did not leave time to clean up, left the house with paint on the brush, somebody other than you, because you would never do that. You would never do that to your poor brushes. <laughs> okay, they have products for that. Uh, brush cleaners. I am like the hospital for people's brushes. They bring them to me all the time. I can fix a brush. <laughs> so this stuff is made by Winsor Newton. Lots of companies uh, have products like this. It's a brush cleaner and restorer. Restorer. But I, um, I leave it in a jar like this. This has been well used. You can see that, right? But I don't see any reason why not to keep using it over and over. So I put the jars in here. Now, if my paintbrush is this one, the stains don't bug me. I don't care. And I don't care if the handle looks like this. It just need, I need it to perform when I need it to perform. And it can't do that if it's full of paint. So the stains and the markings, I don't care. But I do care about the function of the brush. So now if I want to leave this in here, I need to leave it in like overnight. So I will not stick it like this because it's going to be ruined anyway. Although sometimes those paintbrushes are so stiff that it will actually just sit there. But um, if you have, you have these little jar attachments with a little coil that you can clip them into. Those are fancy. I use tape. <laughs> also works just fine. Just so that I suspend it in the water or this chemical solution, but I don't, I don't let it smash on the bottom because, you know, pay good money for these things. You want them to work for as long as possible. Okay. The last thing are these handy dandy things. Um, this is my favorite one. I dropped that. Uh, anyway, I have had this since I was 10, which is when I started taking painting from Mrs. Mavis Moffat. She has since passed away. But she was a folk art painter, but she taught me how to, well, she taught me to paint roses at the time. <laughs> anyway, I did not know how important cleaning up was at that time, and I had done, I've done this to this poor thing. It doesn't bug me too much because it's flat, but I prefer them really, really clean. And it's just as easy as just wiping the sucker off as soon as you're done. It takes a second, but it reduces my frustration. So if I go to mix some paint colors up, I mean, again, if the handle looks like this, I don't care. But if there is a bump in the middle of this, it's like a windshield wiper that's missing a spot, you know, right in front of your face all the time. So. Wipe them off? No problem. Okay, that's it for tools care. Take good care of your brushes, they will take good care of you. All right, thank you for watching. This is Makers Ask, and I'm Blue.